Good morning, everybody. Uh, yeah, very early this morning. Uh, yes, I'm not wearing a soccer shirt again. The rain is in the forecast. A little bit cooler. Hockey jersey. By now, you know the drill almost. Um, Champions League, that's what I want to talk about. Champions League qualification. Uh, today, we already have the group stage draw. I will probably do a short reaction on that on my way home from work, uh, but I'm not sure if it will, it will post tonight. I'm pretty sure it will not post tonight. Uh, it will probably post tomorrow. Uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes, uh, if I get to it. Uh, but I, Champions League World qualification, uh, we had already on Tuesday played three teams qualified, which was um, Ike from Athens, which actually made a little bit of a mess out of qualifying against Videoton from uh, Hungary. Uh, yeah, I think they were ahead and they won one and then I think they even got at home, they won the away game 2-1. Uh, they got a red card and then I guess the Hungarians could have pre uh, pressed for overtime. A little bit surprising but yeah, I think the right team went through there, uh, at least from who I would expect to go through. Ajax against Kiev was for me the marquee matchup of that round. Um, Ajax made it, I think, quite comfortably. They won 3 1 in Amsterdam, 0 0. And yeah, Ajax is one team that I think belongs in the Champions League. Um, with the new format that we'll talk about maybe later as well, uh, where now the 16 teams are for, uh, from the four top leagues, you know, always the top four qualifiers, um, which was basically designed to save Italy because when they uh, when they made the decision, Italy just couldn't get all their teams through qualification. Now they don't have to qualify anymore. Um, I personally don't really like it, but yeah, so be it. I. The one thing is for certain that the pro, 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 probably it makes the Champions League a better product because the group stage got already quite watered down uh, with you know lesser teams. I know I want them in there, but the product is probably better. I think the group stage was better a uh, few years ago uh, before uh, the Platini area, I have to say. Uh, there was a little bit more excitement in the group stage. It also has to, of course, to do that the big teams are getting bigger. And yeah, I still can't get over the fact that whenever uh, Barcelona is, play, is playing Celtic Glasgow, Celtic is in for a beatdown. Uh, that just shouldn't happen. I'm sorry. Uh, the gap should not be that wide. Uh, especially since Celtic is a former winner and I still consider them among the definitely the bigger teams in Europe. And same goes for Ajax. I mean Ajax has not been doing much in Europe lately except for the one time they made it to the UEFA Cup final, uh, UEFA Cup Europa League. Uh, you can tell I'm a kid from the 90s. <laughs> uh, Europa League final against Manchester United which I think was one of the uh, Considering the names involved, was probably one of the best Europa League finals uh, in recent years. When you consider the play, it was one of the worst. I think Manchester United basically killed that one off. But yeah, I'm happy that Ajax is back in the Champions League. Um, they seemingly, I was surprised how little trouble they had going through. They, I saw them against Sturm Graz, which also. It should be considered the the first game against Sturm Graz. They had a full stadium against a decent Austrian team. If you see recent form, but this year Sturm Graz is just not as good. So yeah, they lost a lot of their players. The stadium was full. Uh, if that was a similar constellation in Austria uh, with a stadium of only a quarter the size, the stadium would not be full. Uh, just it tells you uh, the status of Ajax as the team of Amsterdam and the state of soccer in Holland, Netherlands uh, in particular. So yeah, uh, if Ajax do with whom we see yeah, a young boys Baron uh, with an away win against Dinamo Zagreb, 
and I'm gonna get to those guys <laughs> in a little. That was, I think, a big result. Uh, gotta give it to them. Uh, and I'm happy to see young boys Baron uh, for two reasons. First of all, most importantly, Young Boys Baron is a partner team for LASK, meaning the fans like each other <laughs> a lot. So for that reason, yeah, Young Boys is kind of my Swiss team too. Uh, second, they finally beat the curse. Hey, we're gonna get in this video to curses. They finally beat the curse of winning uh, the Swiss championship under Austrian coach Adi Hütter. Uh, who actually came from the Red Bull school, uh, Salzburg. He was uh, their coach for a while. Uh, so he placed his aggressive pressing style that is synonymous now with Red Bull Salzburg. Um, and he in instituted that at Bern. Uh, three quite successful years. And then right after the big triumph, in a way I get it, but Right after the triumph, he signs for Eintracht Frankfurt. <sighs> I get it. You want to be a coach in one of the biggest leagues in the world, and the Bundesliga definitely qualifies at that. Um, I just think, and I had a similar situation with another Austrian coach, Peter Stöger, who, who actually was the last one that put a team not called Salzburg um, to be the Austrian champions. Um, it was in 2012-13 and he also was uh, quite successful but he became champions and did not want to go for the Champions League but rather um, went to Köln in the second German Bundesliga uh, where he had a very successful spell for four years last year he got sacked because they just couldn't win anything and despite them wanting to stay with him in the end yeah just have to sack him and then he became caretaker in Dortmund for the uh, second half of the season. So yeah, and with Hütte I can foresee something similar. I just don't like that he was so successful. He built something in Bern. Um, yes, his stock was probably the highest and he probably got more, but I just didn't like it. So I'm happy that Bern made it uh, despite all that. And yeah, at the cost of Dinamo Zagreb, uh, which is also, they have been a regular in the Champions League, so yeah. Then who else? Uh, Benfica made it at, yeah, that was another one that hurt me a little bit because I really want to park to go through. They were outsiders, but yeah, I, I thought they had a good draw against uh, in Lisbon, so I, and then with the when, when, uh, I, I saw them going up 1-0. But soon after it was 1-1, uh, then the games are just, were too late for me these days. I'm getting early to work, so I only saw the highlights. But yeah, after 1-1, it was all Benfica. Yes, Benfica is a big name, so probably it's good that they are there. But I really would have loved to see Pau go through. I really feel sorry uh, for them not make, making it as the black and white Greek team. There are also sympathies for me. And now I'm missing the last one, but uh, I will put it right here uh, of the qualifiers. And I apologize if, uh, if I left, if I'm leaving the those ones out. Well, the, ah, the last one <laughs> is the one that I really want to talk about. <laughs> ah, stupid me. It's early in the morning and I didn't have that great of a night. But yeah, the last one is of course uh, Cervena Svesta or Red Star Belgrade who qualified at the uh, expense of Salzburg and ever since Red Bull took over Salzburg in 2005 one of the, the most controversial takeovers I can remember this was the first time that we really heard the, the expression modern football modern football ever since Salzburg has played in Champions League qualification 11 times and failed 11 times one of the biggest curses I can remember ever in soccer. This is the holy grail for them. They, they were, a Red Bull took over simply for the reason that they will make it to the Champions League and they never made it. And 
they, they pumped a lot of money in initially, I think, since uh, four years, uh, since Leipzig's in the Bundesliga, Leipzig is their main focus. But Salzburg still is very successful, as the semi-final in the Europa League last year showed. Where, just to put it in relation to the teams that I'm going to mention next, where they beat in the, uh, in the knockout rounds. And I also see that Spain, then they beat Borussia Dortmund. Uh, Germany, of course. They then beat uh, Lazio from Italy, and then they were eliminated in overtime in the semifinals by Olympique Marseille. Uh, in a game, they probably should have won three nothing and made it to the final. Yes, they got a little bit lucky in the draw, especially the Marseille was very kind. But those opponents are. European class, I would say. Now, I made the effort to look up the 11 teams that they failed against in the past years. Uh, initially, when they um, when they started, it was still that the Champions League qualification. There was not the separation into that the uh, champions will get one way, and then the runners-up and so on, uh, third, fourth place teams will have their other way. So uh, it was already tough, and the first team that they failed against was Valencia, where they made a 0-0 at home and then lost 1-3. And I think everyone at that point, yes, maybe there was a slight chance, but everyone said, yeah, Valencia, sorry. The second one was Shakhtar Donetsk, and that one was uh, already a pretty close one. I think they won a close one at home, and then they lost uh, on the way goals, or something like that, or they just missed one goal in Donetsk. Or they, yeah, they got a late goal against them in Donetsk that prohibited them from qualifying for the Champions League. But Shakhtar Donetsk, uh, at least at that time, was a big name team in Europe that actually qualified regularly out of the group stage. When it started to go wrong is when suddenly, and I'm sure I'm getting this wrong, I think first Maccabi Aifa and Hapoel Tel Aviv uh, beat them. And the Haifa results were beatdowns and Tel Aviv was a little bit closer. Uh, and now I'm getting, I looked it up, but I'm not sure if I will uh, get them all right. Um, then they failed against Fenerbahce was to be expected. Uh, before that was of course the big one. Uh, where they didn't, these were all failures in the last round. The big one was, and this was right at the beginning of Roger Schmidt, Schmidt which actually revamped and made the Red Bull brand with a very modern style. But he failed against Dudelange from Luxembourg. Uh, they lost one nothing in Luxembourg and everyone thought, yeah, okay, big deal, uh, we're gonna beat them in Salzburg. Beat they did, but it was only a 4-3 and they were eliminated on away goals. After. This is the nadir of the Red Bull area, era. Uh, actually, something really good came out of them for them. And while I'm talking a lot about Red Bull here, I really don't like that team. But I come to appreciate their successes and the brand of soccer, which is very recognizable. And for the past five, six years, they actually they have a good plan. And for that reason, I start to admire them. And I think they should qualify sooner or later. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, that there might be an easy path finally for them. Uh, but the easy path continues. So we had Dudelange or Dudelingen from Luxembourg. This was an absolute disaster. Uh, Fenerbahce not so much, although they really had chances there too. Uh, seems the stronger the opponent, the stronger Salzburg is playing. And then comes the real uh, disappointment. The last few years, Salzburg Every time they made it to the qualifying, uh, to the playoffs, they were favored. They failed twice against Malmö. And most of those Malmö games I saw, I remember the first one, they won 2-1 at home, a game that they had, they had Malmö 2-0 beaten. They should have been up by 3 or 4, they got the 
that gave Malmö life and in Malmö they absolutely disintegrated 3 nothing. A year later, same opponent, they win 2 nothing again, could have been higher, they completely disintegrate in Malmö, lose 3 nothing again. And Malmö at the time was probably the best Swedish team, but if you just compare the squads, and I think ahead of the second, uh, no, it was the first Malmö, I, I, I know one of those, just to give you the idea uh, of who uh, Salzburg had uh, back then. Mané, now playing for Liverpool and uh, goal scorer in the Champions League final, was at Salzburg. He was one of the best players and I think there was kind of counter dis disputes that he didn't play then, so there was some unrest in the squad, but they still had uh, Jonathan Soriano, uh, who was from the Barcelona Academy and was a youth national team player for Spain. And they also had um, uh, Kevin Campbell, who was an absolute sensational player for Slovenia. His Bundesliga career uh, didn't pan out that well, but those were absolutely great squads, uh, together with some Austrian talent that should make it past Malmö any time of the year. Any time. Any time. And then came the uh, Croatian disaster. <laughs> Uh, Dinamo Zagreb, again they had qualification, uh, almost secured in the last minute, Zagreb was close to, to the end, Zagreb scores the vital away goal, that may let Zagreb go through. Uh, total disappointment there, and last year against Rijeka, I actually think they lost to Rijeka at home, and then couldn't get the, uh, the result in Rijeka where they also dominated. Again. Salzburg is dominating, dominating, usually at home and get stupid goals. And that's exactly what happened yesterday and I called it. I talked to a colleague and I said, I'm sure that Salzburg seems like they're cruising and then they get a stupid goal and um, will not secure qualification. That's exactly what happened. They got two stupid goals. They were, again, I saw the highlights today. In the first half, they should have scored three. They made one right before the half. They got a um, kind of cheapish penalty uh, at the end of, uh, at the beginning of the second half. It was up to nothing. You're cruising. And then within 70 seconds, Cervenas Vesta or Red Star Belgrade scores two goals. Uh, the first one, yeah, there was some uh, naive defending by a young Austrian player. Okay, but then the second goal was all down to their stalwart defender from Brazil. <laughs> you just cannot. It is not possible. I mean, you cannot have a softer draw than they had this year. Uh, of all the opponents that you could have faced, Jervena Svesta, maybe we had v Vidaton from Hungary, but they gave Ajax a good fight. This was the easiest that you could get, and you cannot make it. It is absolutely, and I, you know, on one side, it's utter disbelief on my part, and on the other side, I'm grinning because 11 times they don't make it. Now, 12th time might be the charm. Why? Next year. Next year, Austria has a fixed spot in the Champions League group stage. Uh, provided that the winner of the Champions League this year will also qualify via the league. Well, given that the winners are always one of the big four teams, a uh, big four from the big four leagues, uh, and they always have qualified. I'm afraid if there's an English team that there might be some, uh, it might be that it's, it, they might finish in fifth place or something like that. And then, yeah. They won't, but yeah, that's the one caveat. If the Champions League winner also qualifies via the league, Austria has a fixed spot in the Champions League. Uh, and who is going to be champions? Yeah, should I cannot see another team but Salzburg. But then again, this would be just like Salzburg that they're not doing it this time around and that some other team the last. And it's not that Austria didn't have Champions League uh, soccer. Uh, Austria 
qualified for the Champions League in 2013. Uh, so yeah, it's only Salzburg that fails and honestly fails miserably. The last five, I would say, of those 11 were absolutely miserable. Uh, they should have beaten these teams. If you compare those teams to the ones that uh, they have beaten last year in the Europa League, and in the Europa League they usually make a good run, it is unbelievable. It is unfreaking livable that they cannot get over this hump. To me, I was thinking this uh, morning, this is probably one of the bigger curses. Uh, it's a little bit like the Cincinnati Bengals in the, in the NFL who cannot win a playoff game. Who are for over a decade a decent football team that regularly makes it to the playoff and they just cannot get over that hump. That's, I think, the closest I can, I can find as a comparison for Salzburg not making it to a Champions League. Uh, also got me to think, what are the biggest soccer curses, you know, in American sports, uh, curses are all rampant. And, uh, I saw the Red Sox curse being broken, I saw the Chicago Cubs curse being broken, which probably was the biggest of them all. Uh, the biggest soccer curse I can think of is Benfica, and I'm closing the circle a little bit with what I said about earlier, Benfica being a big team that made it, fortunately, at the hands of Pauk. But yeah, Gutmann's curse. When Benfica won their second European Cup and a little bit of history, the first five European Cups were won by Real Madrid. What well, is now the Champions League? They were won by Real Madrid, the next two were won by Benfica. Uh, against Barcelona and against Real Madrid in one of the most famous finals, 5-3. Uh, and then they didn't want to give Gutmann a contract extension or pay him, and so he left. And Gutmann, uh, Hungarian, uh, uh, also some ties with Austria and so on, uh, really, if you look at one of the most interesting managers that he will ever encounter, he said, well, as long as, if, uh, if you don't give me, Benfica is not going to win a cup in 50 years. Or something like that. Well, it has been more than 50 years, the last one was in 52 that they didn't win and uh, as recent as 2013-14 they had two Europa League finals where they lost in heartbreaking fashion to Chelsea. They were the better team, they lost 2-1 and then they lost uh, on penalties against Sevilla where they really, really, really were the better team. Uh, and yeah, they had a lot of other final losses during that time. So that to me is the biggest existing curse. Uh, the biggest one other than that that I can remember is Barcelona winning the European Cup or Champions League which they laid to rest in 92 uh, but that was also comically how they never managed to win the European Cup. Well they have won five since. So once the curse is broken it sometimes goes the other way. It was the way with the Red Sox and yeah we were gonna see with the Cubs. Well that's my thoughts on the Champions League qual qualification. It was very Salzburg heavy. Not again, not because I like Salzburg. I actually dislike them a lot. Uh, I just find this it's kind of poetic drama around the team. So yeah, let me know your thoughts about Champions League qual qualification, uh, about what Salzburg or any other team that you are following. Uh, in the Champions League qualification, what do you think about their destinies? Whether you have any curse stories, uh, maybe there's a bigger soccer curse out there. Let me know. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked that video and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to see more of these and I will talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.